Welcome back to Machinist Made. Today we're going to go over the Titan 9M on how to completely do the cam side of this part. So the first thing that we always do is we're going to create a setup. Up here under design we want to make sure we're in manufacturing. Go into our setup tab and we will first change the orientation of our machining coordinates. We'll do that by going to orientation, ZX and clicking on the top of the part. Once we've done that, we can simply go to the stock, go down from relative to fixed, and it tells us we need a six by two by one block. I will verify that, and six inches seems a little close, so we will change that to 6.125. It's pretty customary and pretty typical to use an eighth of an inch oversize on material for a part. When you're talking about saw cuts, saw cuts aren't very straight, true, or anything else. So this is the reason why we use an eighth of an inch over. The next thing I want to do is go into my post processor settings and I want to make sure I've got my correct machining coordinate system. Currently I do not, so I want to go back into my first setup tab under machine and then I'm going to select the Haas VF2. You can find this machine under the Fusion 360 library. If you scroll down, you see a bunch of different Haas machines. And the Haas VF2 is right here. It just happens to be under my recent. So I'm going to click on that machine, select OK. I'm going to download the model. And then you'll go through this process and we'll be ready to go. All right, once your machine model is downloaded, you will see machine select edit be able to close that machine out and it'll tell you that it's a Haas VF2 we can then go back to our post processing and we have the right coordinate system here we are going to use a standard format and our work coordinate system is going to be G54 and then we will change our program number to 8009 and the program comments Titan 9M and then we will simply click OK you may have to zoom out because that machine model is in. Now I do realize it's currently sitting on the table. We're not going to get into that part today. Uh, I've got another video on how to position the model within the machine. I'll link that card here somewhere, one of these corners of the video. Now once we have our machine model in, we can go to our drop down chevron here and turn that machine back off. We just want that machine for our work coordinate system and our post processing. Now we can start doing the cam side of the model. So first of all, we need to face the part. So we're gonna click on the facing operation. The tool that we're gonna use can be found in the Fusion 360 library under milling tools. We're gonna to narrow this down to face mill. There's our two inch face mill. Mash select, and it only has one set parameters. I'm gonna change these parameters to 2800 RPM on the face mill. And I'm going to change my chip load instead of changing all my feeds to four and a half thousandths per rev. That'll give me 63 inches per minute on my cutting feed rate. The next thing that I'm going to do is go into linking and turn off my lead in and lead out. I will then go into passes and change my step over from 1.4 to 1.8. And then I will simply click OK. And there is my part faced off good to go next thing that I want to do is adaptive clearing or adaptive high-speed machining but unlike most videos where we have done 2d I am going to jump over here to 3d adaptive clearing the reason for this is this is a part that has a little bit of contour to it where'd you go and I need to be able to clear all this contour out all the way down the part, leaving just enough material to come back later with some kind of tra ball tracking tool to be able to clean up the entire surface. So we will go into our tool. The tool that I'm going to use is under milling tools in the Fusion 360 library, flat end mill and 3 8 I'm also going to select aluminum roughing because this part will eventually be made out of aluminum in my lab. My select feeds and speeds are automatically imported in. 
So under the passes tab, there's a few things in here that I want to change. I want to change this optimum load to 75 thousandths. I also would like to change my step down. Right here under maximum roughing step down, we want to change this to So under our passes tab, there's a few things in here that I would want to change. I want to put set my optimum load to 75 thousandths and then turn smoothing on, change my smoothing down to one thousandths. And last thing I want to do is go into my linking tab, change full retract to minimum retract. I also want to change stay down level to most. And at this point, I am ready to click OK. Now adaptive. 3D Adaptive takes a little bit to process, so if you think your computer's locking up, give it a minute. I assure you it will process eventually. It's going to create a whole bunch of toolpath all at one time to make sure it gets every contour of the part. See right here, we've got three different helical entries because we've got three different holes. Next thing I need to do now is I'm going to come in with a ball tracking tool and finish the contour profile of this part. So I am going to use scallop. Uh, I prefer scallop over parallel. So I'm going to use scallop. The tool that I'm going to use, again, can be found under milling tools and ball end mill this time. And I'm going to select a quarter inch ball end mill. I'm going to select aluminum, I'm sorry, brass finishing. Select that tool. And then I will come in here to my geometry and select my boundary points. So I'm gonna go machining boundary selection. Then I'm gonna select the bottom of that profile right there. Then I will also select the bottom of that profile. I don't want my tool going down into here, so I'm selecting a profile between here and here. The next thing that I'm going to do is go into my passes tab. It's wanting to do a 28,000 step over. I'm just going to change that to 20. This will be kind of rough on the surface. I will turn smoothing on. Again, smoothing of 1,000th, not 1 10th. I will go into my linking and double check everything here. All of this does look okay. Going back into my geometry tab, boundary overlap. I do want to change this overlap to a hundred thousandths. I just want to make sure the tool is rolling off the edge. Now at this point, I can select OK. It's going to create the tool path. And there we go. Now a couple things that I want to change is for one, this tool isn't going all the way to the edge. It's not running down my chamfer. So I'll go back into here by right clicking, editing this toolpath, going back into geometry, changing my additional offset by a hundred thousandths as well. What this will allow is that tool to ramp off the edge and go ahead and cut my chamfer. If I've already got the tool doing the job, there's no point in selecting another tool. So at this point, the only thing we have left to do is drill these holes. Then we will come in here and do the finish profile on these two bores and the outside profile. So I'm gonna go into drilling. I do believe that hole is a quarter inch. It is. So I'm gonna select a quarter inch drill. So we're gonna go into hole making tools, drill, diameter, equal to 0.25. Or a letter E drill. Oop, make sure you're in hole making inch, not metric. There's our quarter inch drill. Select that. I'm going to select the four cylinders here. But I will need to go back. Because you can see there's two things wrong with this hole. For one, it's not punching all the way through. And it's feeding starting below the surface of the part, which will indicate a crash. So I'm going to go into my Heights tab. Top Height. It's not going to be Hole Top. It's going to be Model Top. And then bottom height is going to be drilled through with an additional 50 thousandths. That ensures we drill all the way through the part. I'm simply just going to click OK at this point. 
Now, if you want to, you can take this drill and go up to the top. I know a lot of people that like to do their 3D contouring as their very last operation, and that's fine. I actually prefer that myself. So the next thing that we're going to do is go in and select a quarter inch end mill so I can go in here and finish these counterbores. So we're going to go into contour. The tool that we're going to select is under milling tools, flat end mill, quarter inch. I'm going to change from default to brass finishing again. Select that and I'm going to select these four counterbores and then I'm simply just going to select OK. Now the last thing that we're going to do is come in here and finish the outside contour and these two bores right here. We do that by also going into 2D contour. The tool that we're going to use is that tool 2 we originally used. Select that tool. Select the bottom of that one, the bottom of that one, and the bottom of the profile. And then we just simply have to click OK. Remember we left 20 thousandths on there when we first machined it. Now what I'll do is I'll actually go back and rearrange these tools. So I will put tool 2 with tool 2 and then I'll also drag this counterbore tool under drilling. That way I'm facing, doing my adaptive clearing, then doing my finishing, drilling my holes, then I'm coming in here and finishing my holes and then I am profiling my part. Now at this point, the only thing that we have to do is simulate it. So right click, simulate, and mash the play button. The only thing that I'm looking for when running this part is to make sure there is no collisions. We're off to a pretty good start because I don't see any red down here. Fusion will indicate red if your tool or tool holder is coming into contact with an area that it is not supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit to get past the adaptive stuff so you see what it would look like. Now it's going to come in, finish everything, drill some holes, counterbore some holes, and then it's going to come in here and do the 3D contouring very slowly apparently. I must have quality turned. Yeah, I got my accuracy turned all the way up. If you're having problems with a part running slow, Turn your accuracy here down and Fusion will run a little bit better for you. Now it is saying uh, this part's going to take 18 minutes. Now that's a long time for a single part. We can go in and tweak that and most of that time is going to be spent with this tool right here. And I'll show you how to do that right after we fast forward the simulation so you can see what everything will look like. Now we're at the end of the contouring and you can see that there is a lot of little lines now you believe it or not you will see these lines and that's where a finishing operation will come into play whether you're tumbling the part sandblasting the part or whatever that depends on you but for the demonstration that we're doing here this is plenty good enough the next thing that I'm going to do is show you how to speed this time up. So I'm going to go into the scallop, exit the simulation, edit this scallop. I'm going to go into our tool settings. And right now I've got it set on default, which is 39 inches a minute. If I change that to, let's say, brass finishing and mash select, let it go ahead and render out everything. I'll also go in here and make another tweak. Um, we can go into our geometry the model back on and I can select the bottom of these four holes the bottom of the chamfers and instead of cutting down to the bottom of those holes it will now avoid those holes click OK and see how it doesn't go all the way down it's just coming to the chamfer end now when we simulate this part, it's giving us a simulated time of 14 minutes. Now we can get that down even further because we have actually ran this part. I can go back into our scallop settings, go back into our tool settings, and I do know that with our tool, with our coolant, 
we can run this thing at a hundred plus inches a minute click OK let that go ahead and regenerate go to our simulation and now we're down to 11 minutes 11 minutes for a part that has 3d contouring is not a bad cycle time and with that this is our conclusion to the Titan 90 m like always I hope you like and subscribe to the channel if you've got any questions or comments or even concerns you're more than welcome to leave them down in the comment section hope to see you back around